Well, all great angling adventures have to start somewhere, and believe it or not, this one started in a bar. But what began as idle barroom chat has now become reality. And me and Mick here are going to find out whether we've bitten off more than we can chew with our latest harebrained scheme. It's going to see us travelling all over the United Kingdom and, of course, to Ireland, which is why we're on this ferry. Left hand down. Well, this is it. The great rod race is on, and uh, we've got something like 30 days to whiz around Britain and Ireland to catch 30 odd species of fish, the freshwater fish that you'll find in both countries. And to help me on my quest, my old mate Mick Brown. Thanks, mate. There you go, Mick. That's pretty heavy. And you might be wondering where we are. Well, we've decided to start our journey as far west as we possibly can. We've come here to the town of Uterard, which is over on the western shore of Loch Corrib. Now, Corrib, and it's here in front of me now, is just a vast inland sea. 44,000 acres of water. And you might be wondering, well, what are we doing here? And I think we're both wondering that, actually, Mick. But the reason that we've come here is because this lake contains a lot of trout, and that is the first species on our hit list that's going to take us all over the UK. Now, there are about four species of trout in Loch Corrib, or to be more correct, there's one species and four separate strains of it. Salmo trutter, which is the brown trout, our target. Salmo ferox, which is a variant of the brown trout, a big cannibal trout, which if we were really lucky, we might contact. And then a couple of other variants called the Sonahan and the Dollahan. It's a lake full of fish, but it's a big old piece of water, all right, that's for sure. Straight back, Meg. Okay, Meg. All clear. Now, we're going to be on the road for about the best part of a month pursuing all the different types of fish that we've got to catch, and we thought we'd better bring all of our kit with us. And that's why we have this van custom-built just for the job. And as you can see, it's a real Aladdin's cave of fishing tackle. We've got lots of bait, of course, everything from brown crumb ground bait through to carp ground baits, pellets. We've got pellets over here. We've got more pellets underneath me, flavours, sweet corn, luncheon meat, hemp. We've got all sorts of baits in this van. Nice little area over here just for working on lures. I've put a few lures out just to brighten the place up a little bit to show you around. And then at the back, we've got chairs and bed chairs here. We've got nets, obviously. Interesting system for the rods. We've actually got these in racks made up so that we can literally grab a rod at a moment's notice. Look at this. We've even got a portable fly tying kit in case we want to make up a fly on the hoof. We've got loads of flies with us. But using this clever bit of kit, we can make one as we go along if we find a specific pattern we need for a particular area. More rod storage over here. And, of course, as you'd expect, in all of these drawers, there's loads of kit. We've got spare lines. I've got braids down here. We've got big drawers carrying tackle boxes and lures. This is Brownie's side. Let's have a look in it. Oh, my God, I think his underpants might be in that one. I'll just close that one up there. Now, this is a bit more interesting. We've got brownies reels over here in this particular drawer. So, all in all, what we've got here is a real mobile fishing wagon, and hopefully we've thought of everything that we need to catch every species of fish you're going to find in fresh water in the UK. Now, you might be wondering why we've come all the way over here to start the first leg of our journey. Well, the answer is that this place, Loch Corrib, is one of the meccas for trout fishing, and it's the brown trout, Salmo Trutter, that's number one on our hit list. So what we've decided to do, because it's fairly calm and sunny today, which is pretty unusual on the Corrib, I've got to tell you, 
is we're going to start off by doing some trolling for the big trout with dead baits. Now, it may or may not work, but at least we've got some sort of safety valve in as much that if the weather conditions improve for fly fishing, we'll revert to fly fishing for the ordinary brown trout later. But uh, the clock's ticking, so we really need to uh, just complete tying these rigs and get on with it. Right, well, I've got a roach out behind the boat now, about 30 feet. It's roach that we're trolling here. Now Mick's going to put it in the downrigger, and he'll explain to you, hopefully, how we go about doing it. Well, that roach at the moment is running quite shallow, but we want to get it down quite a way. What we're going to do is take it down on this, this heavy weight on the downrigger system. First thing I've got to do is to put the line in what we call a stacker clip. Now, this is a, a release mechanism. You can vary the tension on, on the mechanism to grip the line and when the ferox grabs the bait it's going to pull the line out of that mechanism and then we can play the fish. But for now it's going to be attached to this very heavy weight. But basically all we're going to do is lower the weight down with the line attached. Well the winch is locked at the moment, it, the ball is just under the surface but there's a clutch mechanism on the side and if I carefully turn the handle backwards, it'll release the clutch. And as you can see, the winch is now lowering the cable. And can you see this counter here? This is telling me how far down I've taken the, the ball. I'm going to keep taking it down. I think we'll, we'll start running at about, about 20 feet. I wind the handle forward, and that locks the mechanism. Of course, we've got to get the rod in position, ready to strike the fish. So if Matt will just pass me the rod over, quite simple really, it just fits into the rod holder behind the winch mechanism and I've just got to take up the slack line until we've got a tight line down to the ball. I'm going to get a slight bend in the rod so when the trout grabs that bait it's going to pull the line out of the stacker clip. The bend in the rod is suddenly going to spring upwards and that's going to help to strike into the fish. One thing I must do though is just set the tension on the, on the clutch here because if, if a trout takes this, it's going to go out with a bang, and if we haven't got something that gives a little, the whole lot's going overboard. That's the theory. Let's see if it works. So while Mick's watching the downrigger system, I'm actually driving the boat. It's a two-man operation, this. If we run into shallow water, Mick's job really is to get those downrigger balls up quickly and get the baits clear of the bottom. My job's to try and keep the boat in the right depth of water, running at the right speed. Now, to help me do it, I've got some fairly sophisticated equipment. What I've got is an echo sounder and GPS system rolled into one. So, by watching this screen and obviously looking ahead, I can control not only the direction of the boat, but also the speed that we're running at, um, the depth of water that we're running over, and I've got lots of information to hand. This big black ball is actually a shoal of prey fish. Any predatory fish in the area is going to be aware of that ball of fish. That's food. So I'm going to drive the boat, try and keep the boat ticking over on a nice steady trolling speed for these dead baits, and Mick's going to run the downrigger system at the back. See this cluster down here? And those little balls of bait fish often attract a big predator. This is a good area, we might get a hit here. There's another trout just hit the surface out there, yeah, Mick. I saw yeah. it, mate. I saw it. Yeah! <laughs> I'm not gonna lift that yet. <laughs> Woo -hoo -hoo! Hang on, let me get the net, mate, in case it's a it's a ferox. It's a pike. No! <laughs> it it's, is. it's not a oh it's a no. Pike. <laughs> But it's a fish. Well, we just changed over to uh, trolling with a spoon because we, we were, weren't happy that the roach we were using were the right size. But we had a hit straight away off one of these corrid pike. Well, you can't be disappointed with that, can you? No, absolutely not. So, shall I lift it out? Here she Ooh. comes, baby! <laughs> <laughs> yes, sirree. Bit of that. Here she's coming again. Hey. Ashes off. God. <laughs> 
Touch the tail. Oh. <laughs> Touch. <laughs> God, that was oh, fun. Oh, well, it wasn't a trout. Yeah. I'm not sure whether we can count yeah. that pike or not, but... Uh... They all count. <laughs> <Woo>. <laughs> well, I'd only just put that out, <sighs> set it to about 15 feet and... Bang. I, I was setting up the other rod and, off it was off. Mr Spoon, yeah. I spilt hot coffee all down my trouser <laughs> neck. <laughs> right, go on, get the kettle on, let's... All right, so nice jump for yeah. the camera, anyway. Yeah. Well, I don't know what's going on here, but the rod tip was bouncing, and... I think I've got a perch or something on the end. Just... Yeah, I can see the flash in the water. <laughs> I've got a fish. <laughs> Matt, Matt, I've got, I've got a trout for you, mate. <laughs> oh, look at that. Well, it's a Corrie Brown trout, mate. I've done it, mate. I know it's not, it's not quite the size we expected, but... Uh, absolutely perfect. Yeah. Look at the spots. Yeah. I mean, basically, that's what we wanted to catch, but probably about ten pounds bigger. <laughs> but, but so we've done it. You can't knock that, can you? No, you can't. No. You can see the, the classic colours of the brown trout here on the Corrib. These beautiful big black spots. Some of them have got red spots too. That is the indigenous brown trout found in the British Isles, as opposed to the rainbow trout, which is the one stocked in most lakes. This is the wild fish. Well, let's just unhook this little fella. That's better. Yeah, I don't think it's fair to keep him, is it, really? No, <laughs> we'll put him back. Yeah. Well, Matt, if you need any tips on catching uh, brown trout, just, <laughs> just come and see me. Well, there you go. Technically speaking, we've succeeded in the first stage of the challenge because we've actually caught a Loch Corrib brown trout. And we're wondering now what to do because the problem with this is that we've got 30-odd species of fish to catch and the more time we spend here, the less time we've got elsewhere. But... It would be nice to catch a proper one, wouldn't it, of at least a couple of pounds, so... We're going to take a chance. We're going we're gonna to stick around a bit longer before we move on to the next thing, but can't stay too long. Yeah, this is a really interesting area because we've just seen a trout slash at the surface. Fish of about five or six pounds. It wasn't a ferox, but it was big enough for us. And that, 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 that was definitely a fish knocking at the bait there. A double tap? I'd, like one hot, one just cold. Like, Dink, dink like that, and it was alive. It wasn't the bottom. I know we're on shallow water, but that, that was a fish just tap that bait then. I You've been out in the sun too long, mate. It's just a big... Heavy weight here. I can't feel any real movement on the end, but the line's just come zinging out the cliff. I don't know whether we picked up a log or something. It's one hell of a fish if it is. <laughs> yeah, I don't think it's a fish, mate. No. It's the bottom, isn't it? Just pulling the fish, the boat towards it. Yeah. Oh, it's just come yeah. off. Yeah. I don't know what it was, but it wasn't a fish. Heart was in my mouth then. Yeah. Come on, we can't give up. We've still got an hour. Well, we spent the best part of the day on this now, you know me. Yeah, don't I know it? Just do with a bite, you know. I think I might have just lost one. I don't know about you, but I'm really tired now. Yeah, I'm tired. 